And so that is, you know, I would say a teaser of what we are about talking on um, Good Living segment right here on Prime Morning. And like I said earlier, there is an expert in the house that we're going to have a conversation with to give us in-depth knowledge. How can we prevent chronic kidney disease? Um, how will we be able to identify it if uh, we are having, you know, some malfunctions with our kidney? And so speaking on today's segment of Good Living segment, we have... Professor Grace Ayensu Dankwa, who is a surgeon and public health expert. Good morning, Prof. Good morning, Sidra. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Excellent. Okay. And like I also said, that we have um, an amazing young woman in the house that um, who is living with uh, chronic kidney disease. Uh, we're also going to speak to her. She's going to tell us exactly what she's going through. Um, how was it? How was she diagnosed with this disease? And so, seated with me is Patience Opati Amba. Uh, she is a person living with chronic kidney disease. Hi, Patience. Hi, Sidra. How Thank are you? you? I'm doing well. You're doing very well. You're fine. I'm Perfect. fine. <laughs> day by day. Okay, great to have you here, seated with us today. Thank and you. I can't wait for you to educate us on, you know, everything in relation to chronic kidney disease. But first, let me start with Prof. Prof, I want to come to you. First and foremost, what is chronic kidney disease? Thank you, Asedua. Um, and patient is my patient. So right. I'm, <laughs> I'm here with a very dear patient of mine. Yeah. Um, chronic kidney disease, as your video talked about, mm -hmm. it's literally about the uh, kidneys that are not working. Um, I'm going to try to keep this conversation less medical right. and more yeah. so that people will understand. Relate. So I'll it. try to take out a lot of the medical terminology. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so basically, the kidney filters all the blood. We have two ways of waste products of the body. So one is the um, poop, the okay. toilet yeah. that we get. Yeah. That's all the solid stuff. It goes into your, your you eat it, mm -hmm. it goes into your gut, and it comes out as toilet. Mm -hmm. The other one is the liquids. The liquids end up in the blood, and that's where all the blood in the body every day goes to the kidney, and the kidney is a filter. It's like a sieve. Mm. So all the bad things in your blood gets filtered by the kidney. Mm. And every day it's just going through and it's sieving and getting rid of all the bad stuff. Right. And all the bad stuff is what we see in what we call urine. Mm, okay. So you have to urinate and you have to have a bowel movement. Yeah. When I talk about toilet, I mean bowel, bowel movement. Move, yeah. You have to have both. Yeah. So every day people wake up in the morning, they have a bowel movement, they urinate. Throughout the day, they urinate. So the kidney is a very, very important organ. In other words, if you don't have it, your body can't filter out all the waste products. Mm. So it stays in your body and your body can't handle it after a while. Mm -hmm. Every day, most of us, average people would urinate about three or four times a day. The person with kidney failure cannot urinate at all. Okay. There's different stages of kidney failure, of course, but the end stage kidney disease or end stage renal disease is where the body cannot f um, filter the blood at all. Mm. So all that stuff will stay in the body. And when you get to that stage, that's the stage where something else has to do the job for you. Otherwise, you can't survive. It's not a survivable situation right. if you don't have that filter. Okay. So we, after you get to the end-stage kidney disease now, how do we even know that somebody has end-stage mm -hmm. kidney disease? So the person, the patient will come to you. First, they're very tired. Some of them are nauseous. They're vomiting. They look oh. puffy. Um, oh. They have anemia. They are very tired all the time. They climb one flight of stairs and they can't breathe. Um, their, their legs, are, uh, ankles are all swollen. Their face is swollen. There's all kinds of symptoms. They just don't look well and they're feeling bad and they're all um, bloated. Okay. Once they come to you, there's certain lab things we have to do. We have mm -hmm. to check your blood. There's a specific uh, test that we're looking for, mm -hmm. which is the estimated glomerular filtration rate. We call it EGFR. I'm trying to stay away from medical terms, <laughs> but we look at that in your blood. We look to see how your blood cells are doing. Right. Then after that, we can also do lab tests. I mean, a radiology test, okay. which is we can do an ultrasound of the kidney or we can even do um, CT scan of the kidney. Mm. That is just taking a picture 
of the kidney from the outside to see what it looks like inside. It's like an x-ray. Mm -hmm. So once we do that and we know that it's getting to kidney um, end stage kidney disease, sometimes we have to do a biopsy where we actually go inside and take a little bit of sample of the tissue and put it under the microscope and see oh. what the problem is. Wow. There are various ways where people get end stage kidney disease. In Ghana, the number one and two really is high blood pressure and diabetes. The third one, which is now, I think, overtaking the first two, almost close to the first two, is something in the environment that is happening in Ghana now. It's either maybe too much alcohol consumption, okay. maybe too much of our herbal medicines and, oh, really? you know, the um, aphrodisiacs that people are taking. Oh. Um, there's something going on in Ghana about kidney disease that is very alarming, and it's happening to many young people between 20-something and 45, that age group. Yeah. And that's our working group of people in this country, and you yeah. see all of, the, all of them coming up with kidney disease. It's a problem. Mm -hmm. You know, I trained in the U.S., mm -hmm. and when I opened the dialysis center, I moved to Ghana maybe about 2013, 12, 13, mm -hmm. and I realized that kidney disease was a huge problem. So I actually, as a surgeon, though, I'm not a nephrologist, mm -hmm. I'm a surgeon mm -hmm. and also a public health expert. Mm -hmm. I realized that this was going to become a public health problem. Mm -hmm. And there was not enough dialysis machines in the country. So the issue was I need to open a dialysis center so that these people who don't have access to um, kidney dialysis will come to us. So what I, re I was expecting older people, you know, 65 some, somewhere above 50, 65. Yeah, because 65. on a regular, it's above, that, it's that between 65 correct. and then above. That is That's correct. when, you know, these are the people that you usually have kidney exactly. diseases. Exactly. But I was the shocked. younger ones. I was shocked in Ghana. I, literally, I would say 98% of my patients are young people. Wow. I'm not seeing that older generation. What is the that, age range? The age range is from 25 what? to about 45, maybe 45, 50, that age range is the majority of my patients today. Wow. So something is happening in our system. Um, we're still waiting for the entire um, medical community or research community to come up with what exactly is the problem. But what is happening is that these young people are coming up with kidney disease and we don't really know what the problem is. In general, though, is high blood pressure. Most people have high blood pressure and they don't know they have yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And so I yeah. recommend that you do tests to make sure that you don't have high blood pressure. The second one is diabetes. Mm. Most people have diabetes, they don't know it. Mm -hmm. Because most of us in general are not doing the health uh, maintenance or going to a doctor when you are not ill. Mm -hmm. We all only go when we are ill. Mm -hmm. So most of them as, as are not checking. But the end stage of all of this is that the kidney does not work. So you cannot urinate. Some people will urinate, but it's not, it's just liquid. There's no, it hasn't filtered the blood. So it's just now what is not taking out the waste products from your body and the waste product cannot stay in the body for too long. So once you get there, you have two options. You have to do dialysis, which most people start. Mm -hmm. There's various kinds of dialysis. Mm -hmm. In Ghana, there's only one type of dialysis, which is a hemodialysis. So what the- And that is not enough. There's not enough in the country. Some regions don't even have one machine. A lot of them. We have 16 regions, and I would say maybe about only five regions actually have the machine. So the rest five of Five regions, yes, not of the five 16. Or 16. That is correct. So they don't have access to it. So you have to move to somewhere that has the machine. But there are a lot of kidney health, you know, kidney disorder cases that keep on, you keep on recording in Ghana. That is correct. And there's not enough. And even where there is... It's too expensive. Health oh. insurance, Ghana health insurance does not cover kidney disease. Mm -hmm. So you have yeah. to pay out of pocket. Mm -hmm. You are required wow. to have three sessions a week. Each session now, even the lowest is about maybe 400 Ghana CDs. I think Colibus charges 300 and something, but because it's subsidized. Right. The average, the actual cost of it is about maybe 450, maybe more. Okay. With the foreign exchange price going up because mm -hmm. all the mm -hmm. consumables that they use has to be paid in foreign exchange because we don't make it here in Ghana. Yeah. So they all have to be imported. Right. So the average is about 500 cities. Imagine that you have to pay 500 cities three times a week. That's just for the session. That doesn't include your medicines and your transportation, medicines. everything else you have to do your wow. before you get to the dialysis. 
So 500, let's say, plus another 500. That's 1,000, three times a week, 3,000. Plus transportation, wow. 3,500 wow. a week. Food. Special food that you special have to eat. Because, special food. Yeah. Yes. And that, okay, since Patience is the one, uh, you know, mentioned, we are going to get into that. But then before that, Patience, I want you to introduce yourself to us. Tell us where you're from. All right. My name is Patience Sukbatiamba. Thank you very much. Um, I'm from um, Ghana. I'm mm -hmm. here in Ghana. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm here in Ghana. And um, like you um, said, the end, um, and then like Prof said, there are stages of, of the kidney disease. And then um, I have reached the final end, which is... You've the, reached the final stage? Yes, the end stage, which is um, stage five. Yeah, and so I am now on dialysis three, three times a week. So, yeah, that's... Okay, so um, before we get into how, what exactly, you know, the day-to-day -day activities are like for you and everything, how did it start? How were you diagnosed? Okay, um, just like Prof said, mm -hmm. some of the underlying conditions may be, may be health-based. Health okay. And uh, mine started with uh, di di diabetes. Yeah, so... I think it grew, okay. and then we got here. So that has been it. So apart from apart from apart from the diabetes, mm -hmm. I mean, were there any other symptoms that were sort of like raising an alarm that made you question that no, there could be something wrong with my kidneys? Yeah. And were you knowledgeable, uh, you know, to know that okay, maybe I have an issue with my kidneys. Let me go get it checked. Um, no. Okay. No. Because, I mean, in um, Ghana, there are some issues that have to be shielded, oh. you understand? Yeah. So some of the issues, even, even if you go to a health facility and, and then you are not um, careful, mm -hmm. they will just work on the symptoms for you without getting to the root, root cause of mm. what, is, what is happening. And I think that is what happened in my case okay. because I was um, getting checked all the time mm -hmm. going for my diabetes um, sessions all the time so mm -hmm. in fact I I didn't understand and then I was being treated based on the um, current situation for instance I go I have headache and then they mm -hmm. treat you for the headache oh. you go you have swollen feet and then they treat, they treat you, you for, for swollen, that. swollen feet you understand there wasn't a thorough, um, how do I put it, a thorough search for them to actually say, let us go deeper and see why all these yeah. symptoms yeah. are happening. Yeah. yeah. And so when, when that session came, I had already entered the end stage. Yeah. So when you found out you had reached stage five? Stage five, yeah. How long ago was this? Uh, a year ago. A year ago? Yeah. Over a year ago. Over a year. Yeah. Wow. Doc, let me, let, me, let me come to you. I mean, um, earlier you were speaking on the function of the kidney. But you know, there have been this, you know, it's all over on social media about, you know, you don't necessarily need both kidneys. You need just one kidney. Mm -hmm. I mean, I want you to make us understand that first and then we can delve into it. Okay, so when people have hyper, the, the main causes of kidney disease in Ghana, we said, she said it was her, her initial um, reason was diabetes. Yes. Patient said that. Yeah. Then high blood pressure. A lot of people don't even know they have high blood pressure. Yes. Mm -hmm. And like she said, a lot of people even have diabetes, but they, the doctors are not looking for what is the end stage reason. If you have diabetes and I'm treating it, I have to treat it to prevent other organ failure mm -hmm. because we know that mm -hmm. diabetes can affect mm -hmm. your organs, mm -hmm. it can affect your blood vessels, yeah. Yeah. it can affect your kidney, yeah. it can affect your eyes. There's a lot yeah. of things diabetes can do. Mm -hmm. So as a doctor, if somebody comes to me as a diabetic, those are the things I'm looking for. Yeah. Right. And when I right. see a symptom like swollen um, feet or ankle or puffiness, so I'm expecting there's something wrong with the whole fluid imbalance. Mm -hmm. So what is the problem? Is this the kidney yeah. or is this the, a, vessel, a vesicular or a vessel problem? So we have to look beyond the immediate symptom. The symptom 
that you're seeing now, it's from an underlying problem. Mm -hmm. So the question is, what is the underlying problem? Mm -hmm. A lot of people, the first time they know it is when they've already had one organ failure. And for patient, uh, like she said, uh -huh. is that kidney had already failed. Yeah. If it's diabetes, it's not going to affect just one kidney. It's yeah. going to affect both because it's a systemic problem. Okay. So both kidneys fail at the same time. Okay. If it's high blood pressure, it's a systemic problem. It will affect both. The reason why we can deal, we can live with only one kidney is that when you have di um, end stage kidney disease or mm -hmm. end stage renal disease, people call it different, mm -hmm. but it's the same thing yeah. where you've reached a stage where something has to filter your urine. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about. So you've reached a stage where your body cannot do the it work. Can't do the, the kidney cannot yeah. do the filtering. Yeah. It cannot add all the ends. I mean, all the chemicals that it adds to the body to make the body uh, maintain homeostasis, meaning the body in balance. Kidney can do that, so somebody has to do it for you. Right. You have two options. One is dialysis. The dialysis is only that you sit and the machine will do the work of the kidney. So the machine will take all your blood, put it through the machine, filter it like the kidneys would have done, and then put it, we put it back into the into body. The body. Otherwise, yeah. all the waste products will still be left in, in, in body. the body. Yeah. And the body cannot last for maybe a week mm -hmm. or two without. That's what causes a swollen feet. That is correct. And, all, right. and it also pulls out some of the liquid, the, yeah. blood, the fluid that is overweight, the, over, over the excess fluid mm. off of the body. Mm -hmm. So the other option, if you dialysis or you can do a kidney transplant, mm -hmm. those are the only two options once the kidneys have failed. The dialysis will, every day, they have to do it three times a week. It would take the blood. There's a, either a catheter mm -hmm. or you have something called the fistula. Yeah, it's fistula. just the vein and the artery. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's just the vein and the artery that we connect together. You know that the blood comes through with the um, arteries will bring the blood into the rest of the body. Right. And once the, the tissues have, or the organs have taken out the nutrients or the oxygen in it, then it comes back to the heart with the vein. Mm. And the vein will now, I mean, the lungs will put the oxygen back in and then it goes down and feeds the organ. Yeah. So it's like a loop. Yeah. So yeah. when we connect the AV fistula, we use the vein and the artery and we connect it so that we can pull the blood that is coming mm -hmm. and then re remove the um, the toxic or the toxins or the byproducts or the end products and then put it back into the body right that's all the machine does okay so the kidney is about a bean sized organ yeah. like the maybe my fist yeah and we need a huge machine to do the same thing wow so does this mean so patients are so, is on stage five does it mean that uh, both kidneys are not working? That is correct. Wow. And she mentioned that she goes on dialysis twice a week. Three, three times. times yeah. Twice a week. That yeah. is correct. You have. But on a regular, how how often should the kidney be doing this filtering in the body? In, like a regular, a yeah. person who doesn't have chronic kidney yes. disease. Oh, we pee, we urinate about how many times a day? So I that mean, is when it's doing the filtering. That is correct. If you're not doing the filtering, some people will still have urine, mm -hmm. but that urine is not filtered. So uh, even though you're seeing that you're urinating, there's, yeah. it hasn't removed the byproducts or the yeah. toxins from the body. Yeah. So not every end-stage kidney disease person will stop having urine. Most mm -hmm. of them will not. Yeah. But in general, there might be some urine, but yeah. it's not the filtered product. What is, the, what is the probability that early detection of uh, chronic kidney disease would actually prevent you from having it, you know, like, or get into stage five? There is a good probability. So we have two types of kidney disease. We have acute and chronic. Okay. Chronic is when it has gone too far. I, some, with some people, when they have acute, like immediately when it happens, mm -hmm. within the first few months, there are certain things we can do. Control the blood pressure. If it's diabetes, make sure, look for other things. There's medicines we can give. Some people might even go on dialysis, and it's only temporary. Okay. It's not a long-term problem, and we can maybe coax or try to get the kidneys to function. Mm. Maybe they might not function 100%, but at least there's a chance in the immediate period. Most people don't even know, find out when it's not within that immediate period, and so it's end stage. 
uh, it's chronic, it's a longer term, and by then the kidneys have already failed. And so the question is now, how do we remove the um, toxins or right. the byproducts? Right. And you only have two options. The first one is hemodialysis, which is what we do. There's another kind of dialysis, which we don't do in Ghana. And then the next one is transplant. Transplant is also very expensive. I mean, people go to India, people go to Turkey, yeah. other places yeah. to do transplant. You will pay about maybe two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to about five hundred thousand dollars just to get a kidney. And the problem with those kidneys that people go to India and other places to get is they are not really healthy organs because they usually get it from either poor people who want to sell one mm -hmm, kidney and leave mm -hmm, another mm -hmm, one, or mm -hmm. they get it from prisoners or something like that. So the quality of the organs that they get is not that great. So you go to India, you get your transplant, you pay 500,000 by the time you're finished and you come home and maybe a year or two later, the organ fails again. I have about three or four patients that have been transplanted already, but now the kidneys already failed. There's another kind of transplant that is good, mm -hmm. and that's the one, I mean, that's the best, not good, but the best of all the transplant options. Okay. And that's the one where it's a living related. And that's where your question comes in as to, you can live with one kidney. Mm -hmm. Because the living related is, for instance, I have kidney disease, my spouse wants to donate a kidney to me. My child, my friend, my cousin, somebody I know, living related, wants to donate the kidney. In that situation, we do a lot of tests and the one who is more compatible with me, because the more compatible the organ is, the better the body will keep it. Mm -hmm. I mean, my body will keep it. The more compatible I am with you, for yeah. instance, the better my body will keep the organ that you give me. So we do all, we run a series of tests mm -hmm. and the one that is more compatible is the ones whose kidney we take. Okay. So that person will end up with just one kidney mm. and I will end up with one with kidney. With one as well. And it will function Perfectly. just as well as if I don't have, I mean, it, the body would not even know mm. that I don't have the other organ. And so when we, in medicine, the doctors, we say that we have, everybody has a kidney and a spare. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Right. So right. it's on, almost as if God or the creator, <laughs> the maker of the body knew that there's issues like that. So they gave us an extra kidney. But when you have diabetes, both fail and both will not work. When you have high blood pressure, something that is systemic, both of the organs will fail. Wow. Anyways, patients, let me come to you. How, how is your daily activity like? Ah, wow. Uh, it shuts your daily activity. Um, especially when you have pains in your um, joints. Um, walking becomes difficult, standing becomes difficult, and then um, you have to deal with body pains every day. Mm. Imagine being, being on, on painkillers the whole day, and especially at night when you can't even sleep. Yeah, so um, your um, daily activities kind of becomes unstable, you know. So as you said, are you feeling any body pains? The, the knees. The knees. <laughs> oh. the knees and then um, a few body headaches, stomach upsets and all that. Yeah. I'm interested in knowing who patients was before. Okay. Um, patients was... Um, uh, First of all, I am, I am a philanthropist. I run a charity organization called the Sycamore Tree Foundation, okay. where we solicit funds for prisoners and then orphanages. And so you can check us out. Okay. And then I was a student, my, um, both uh, an MPhil student at the University of Education at the Human Rights and Peace Conflict department and so now I have two master's degrees and uh, wow. working on the PhD mm -hmm. so okay. yeah <laughs> so that has been me mm -hmm. and so when it started uh, schooling was um, quite difficult so I had to kind of drop out okay and then treat it not knowing it wasn't treatable so yeah and so it was uh, put on hold for some time mm -hmm. and then 
we are still on it. Mm. Thanks to my lecturers, we have had to do a few things online. Yeah. Basically, everything was online. Yeah, so that has been me. I can tell you a little bit about what the life is like. I mean, for my patients, because I have a dialysis center called Sage Medical Center, and mm -hmm. patient is one of my patients right. there. The, the, and it's in East Legon, opposite the Tanko Plaza um, by, um, on House. Boundary Road, Noble House Restaurant, okay. the old Noble House okay, Restaurant. Okay, I think I've seen it. So mm -hmm. imagine that she's a working uh, woman, yeah. she goes to school, she's yeah. working, yeah. and then she has kidney failure. Yeah. Every day she has to, three times a week, she has to go to a facility mm -hmm. and get all her blood pulled by a machine four and then hours. replaced four mm -hmm. hours a day. Four so hours. four hours a day for wow. three times a week. So basically you have no lifestyle. Yeah. You have no life. By the time you have finished the four, four hours, you are wiped out because the body can, it's very stressful on the body to have all five so liters. So sleep. you go and sleep. Some yeah. people are wiped out till the next day mm -hmm. and wow. you barely wake up the next day. You barely have something to eat. Mm -hmm. And then next day you are back to, to dialysis. Wow. Then because of the function of the kidney, there's a calcium issues. They get a lot of body cramps. Yeah. So you're always cramping. Um, That's what she says. She's feeling pain. Exactly. Yeah. So um, you're on chronic pain medicine. You are swollen. You are tired. You are fatigued because the kidney also filters blood and the blood has the red blood cells. So they are often anemic all the time. Mm. And so if you're a young person and you have kidney failure, it just wipes you out. You can work really. I don't see how you can work. Yeah. You can really function as a functional adult as you were before mm. the, the problem happened. And like I said, in Ghana, it's happening to really young people mm -hmm. from 25 to about 45 to 50 yeah. years old, that yeah. range. That's our working class now. Anyways, and so um, on, your, on the screen, we'll be showing you uh, pictures of patients. I mean, there are some pictures that have already been shown. Uh, you can see that she got, um, at some point, her feet were swollen. Her entire leg actually was swollen. There are some of the pictures that will be scrolling on your screens while we are having this discussion. But then Doc mentioned, you know, at some point you're even too tired, the following day, not even having the strength to eat something. So what do you eat? Um, we eat kidney friendly foods. <laughs> what are they? Um, for now, I mean, kidney, with this issue, you don't need a lot of fluids in you. Okay. Because the fluids makes you weak. Right. And so you will have to try to avoid a lot of foods that are fluid and, mm. and then fruits. Because mm. they also have a lot of, um, fluids. Water. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You don't have to take coconuts mm. and then with sage they would actually give us a list of what to eat and then what not to eat granite is out and so you cannot eat um, granite soup you cannot take palm palm no soup and some other things so now i am basically on rice meals stew foods and no soupy foods so okay so no more fufu and soup no more fufu, fufu oh. and soup it's so fluid. so you, uh, yeah it's fluid <laughs> it's, it's fluid and so but it's what about bonko and pepe yes you can you eat bonko and pepe yes, bonko bonko and okra stew yeah. okra stew the, the stew not soup yes, okay but at least you can still enjoy some of Thank them you. how old are you 35 35 do you have kids uh, not yet not yet um, so how is the family supporting you in all this? I want to thank them so, so much for their love because this one is much attention. Mm. If you don't have someone that sits permanently with you and then committed to you, yeah. uh, you can do it. Because imagine <coughs> I, have, I have cramps lying down. Right. I'm like, please help me get up and let me sit. The person holds you and you are screaming. Just like, oh, you said oh. I should help you. Said yes, but make it. I mean, easy. Yeah, and yeah. and in my home, every day I have a girl, and then my and my parents take turns to come and massage me oh. every day after after dialysis. Dialysis. Yes. Mm -hmm. So at night you'll be hearing screams. You know, don't worry, to be fine. Some are holding your your feet. One is holding your arms. They are massaging wow. you. 
so that their body would be released. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that is how it's it's been selected foods anyway. May I know how much you're spending on this dialysis? You do it thrice a week. How much are you spending? When we add the injections <coughs> and the medications, we are spending about two thousand seven hundred. Let's say three thousand a week. Three thousand cities a week. Every week. And I'm not working. Exactly. I was mm -hmm. going to ask you. I'm not working. So how are you getting I'm the money? I'm not monies? working. It's from my friends. And oh, then wow. my family. Exactly. Oh, you've given me chills. <laughs> so friends and family are supporting are with their money. So every week, every week, they're spending about 3,000 CDs yeah. mm -hmm. on dialysis mm -hmm. and injections. And medications. And medications. And, and sometimes transport. transport well. Yeah, transport. transport yeah. And sometimes labs. You okay. Must, yes, you, you must, must do, run labs. Yes, you must run almost uh, either a monthly lab, depending on your condition. Mm -hmm. You must also take the medicines for what the underlying problem the was. Are. Because if you don't continue to take, for instance, with patient, if she, she was a diabetic, yeah. if you don't continue to take your insulin or your diabetes medicine, right. other organs can fail. Can fail. Yeah. Yes. So you have to take for diabetes as well. Every, yes. Yeah. So and one has already failed. Pressure. The kidney has already filled yeah. and you can have other complications with other organs. So you have to still take your diabetic medicines. Mm -hmm. You still have to follow up with your diabetes as well as now you're dealing with a one, I mean, two, one organ failure, which is the kidney has already failed. Mm -hmm. So you have to continue to maintain and Why? take your medicines plus your dialysis medicines, mm -hmm. plus your, um, your sessions, plus your supplement. Now you, you have a special diet because you can't eat everything. Mm -hmm. Then that's just on the side. You haven't paid your rent. You haven't bought your electricity. You haven't done your, you know, the normal things that yeah. we all that do for, to maintain yourself. You haven't bought clothes, none of those things. This is just the 3,000 she's talking about. It's just to maintain the disease that, that she has. That's it. But with everything that you've mentioned, she's probably spending more. Yeah, much more, more, I think. More. more. A lot more. Every week. Yes. Yeah. Anyways, um, so, <laughs> anyways, viewers, so uh, we are speaking on chronic kidney disease. We have patients here uh, who is, you know, living with chronic uh, kidney disease. She is at stage five. I'm going to ask Doc what exactly can be done uh, for patients at this stage. But then before that... We are going to put the number on there. You can call in if you have, mm -hmm. you know, any questions at all. Problem. What exactly you want to know? What is it that you want to ask patients? Please make sure that you do call. If you can't call, you can send in your comments on our socials as well, and then we'll do our best to read it. Now, let me come to you, Doc. Patients is at stage five. What can be done? At this juncture, she's, she has to continue dialysis. She cannot stop dialysis because that's the only way she can remove the... Uh, filter the blood and get all the waste products out of the body. The other, the last option again is the transplant, which we don't do in Ghana. I mean, we do a little bit in Kolibu, but we don't have an actual transplant center where we're doing a lot of transplants. So just dialysis and hopefully if she can afford it and get somebody who can donate the kidney, then you do the transplant. So right now she needs a kidney donated. She would have a kidney donated, but the just because somebody is donating, she would need the money too. Yeah. And the money, like I yeah. said, is almost at this juncture with the way things are going, it's about 500,000 US dollars. And one dollar now is to almost 15 Ghana cities. So times 500 is how much? 15 times 500. That is for the surgery and or aside getting the kidney. That's getting just for the surgery to transplant from the, um, the other person. To, yeah. the, to you because they do the, wow. the surgery the same day so the donor will come in a different theater then the the recipient which will be patient in a different theater so we take the kidney from one theater walk across and bring it mm -hmm. to the other patient and then it's implanted so it's a very expensive procedure okay doc uh, so we have uh, precious on the line good morning precious good morning how are you how doing are you? <laughs> i'm fine how are you I'm good, thank you. Okay, please speak to us. Um, thank you so much for the um, enlightening program. I have a question for Doc. Okay. Um, I just want to find out, if you're on stage three, what are the chances of reversing it? And also, 
um, what about somebody who urinates and has blood in the urine and poop? How bad is that? Okay, all right. Thank you very much, Precious. Uh, we have another caller on the line, Geshan. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Mia, yeah, please talk to us. Uh, actually, I have a question to uh, Doctor. Doctor, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, please, please go ahead. She can hear you. Uh, uh, actually, I'm also uh, a patient, uh, like a kidney disease. Okay. Uh, uh, I wanted to ask. Uh, they have done a dialysis to me. Uh, they have picked sample of my kidney, but still I didn't get them. So. But I'm still on my medication, the Fuzimine and the Fedexilla. All right, thank you very much, uh, Gashon. Uh, we have another call on the line. Hello, good morning. Yeah, very good morning, uh, Madam. Please, good morning. Uh, my name is Steven. I'm Steven. I'm to the program. Okay. I'm probably right from my channel. Okay. Uh, actually, uh, I want to say you look so beautiful in your amazing <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. And actually, please, you know, some of us, uh, mm -hmm. our education level is too low. So when they That's come right. in, when they come in, they are using their jargons. They should I bring tried. it down for me. <laughs> she <laughs> has tried. I'm you have tried. no idea. <laughs> yes, she has it's tried to break thing. it down. All right. Okay. Thank all right. You. But keep on watching, though. Maybe she will continue doing her best to break it down for you. All right. Thank you very much for calling. <laughs> Doc, now let's uh, yeah. answer some of the questions. Some of the, yeah. Thank questions. you. For the last caller, I, I'm really trying not to use a lot of medical um, words and jargon so that the average Ghanaian who doesn't know medicine can understand. So forgive me if every once in a while I use some of the medical jargons. But my goal today is really to educate the public. The first lady asked about how easy is it to reverse. Like I said, yeah. if it's acute, if it happened in the immediate now, mm -hmm. so in the next few months, there is possibility that we can reverse it. Okay. We can do dialysis, maybe it's temporary dialysis, and then the kidney can really bounce back. In general, by the time you've gone past maybe a few months or so, and the kidney hasn't bounced back and you're doing dialysis, you will have to continue the dialysis. Okay. And then she's mentioned something about blood in the urine, urine yeah. and in the poop. Is yeah. that what she said? The urine. Okay, blood in the urine. When you have blood in the urine, it's something quite different. Okay. So if somebody came to me as a doctor with blood in the urine, I would look for other reasons why there's blood in the urine. I would do a lab test. Um, at some point, I would even... Because when I see blood in the urine, is it painful or it's not painful? If the person is not having any pain, then I'm thinking it's something else. If it's painful, then I'm thinking something else. When it's painful, it could be like a renal stone. Mm. The, the kidneys can form stones oh, from calcium and from other things. And sometimes when the stones are being passed, because remember, it's tubes that are it's like pipes right. that are rolled together and right. there's a sieve and it's filtering. Right. So if there's a stone in it, you know the stone is not smooth. It mm -hmm. irritates, you know, the tubes and you can get blood in the urine because right. it's tearing a little bit of holes and then it's okay. getting in the urine and it can be very painful, okay. like really painful. Wow. It's one of the most severe pain that I've seen, especially when the stone is passing through a small tube and it's, you know, rotating and it's tearing. Yeah. It's one of the pain, most painful things I've seen patients come to, come with. But if it's not painful, you are not in pain, but you're seeing blood in your urine, then I'm thinking something else. It could be yeah. bladder cancer, it could be this. So sometimes at some point, we even put a tube inside the bladder to make sure that there's nothing there. Right. But there's other tests that we have to do. So if she's having blood in her urine, is it painful or it's not? Either way, she needs to go and see a specialist or a doctor and have it really worked out. Because okay. it could be just a stone or something else. Okay. And it has to be worked out. Okay. All then right. um, the second person asked about, he has kidney disease. Yes. And he's also, I think, um, on dialysis. Yes. And he, he has had, and it didn't work. He yes. got no results. Yes. And he's had a, bi a biopsy or something and he hasn't received his mm. results or something like that. If he has had dialysis and he still needs to have dialysis, he needs to continue the dialysis okay. because you cannot live or survive without the dialysis. Mm. If you go about two, three weeks with no dialysis at all, you're not going to make it. 
because the body, the toxins, the, the body can't keep it. That's why it's a waste product. That's why we urinate yeah. it. Once it stays in the body, all kinds of things can happen to your brain, to the body, to the muscle, to the cramping, mm -hmm. the, to the bloating. There's a lot of things that can happen and it's not conducive to life. So okay. you're not going to make it. You won't live. Okay. So if he's on dialysis now and still waiting for his results, then he should continue having dialysis. Um, we have at Sage Medical Center, we have patients coming in all the time. Like I said, we're in East Legon, it's opposite Tanko Plaza. Mm -hmm. uh, we have new, brand new machines, um, a lot of them. And we also have a philosophy of treating the patients well. Okay. Because our philosophy is that, I mean, people like patients, it's a chronic problem. They're going to be this for maybe for life or until they get a transplant. And so we don't want them to come to us and That's also true. feel like we are not family. So we have a family-oriented type um, facility. Mm -hmm. We treat everybody like friends. Sometimes we have issues. Sometimes we don't. Yeah. She's one of my toughest patients. Yeah. Oh, I see. <laughs> I call her the chief of the school How of okay. hard knocks. <laughs> extremely demanding <laughs> right. but that's what it is you know i mean i can imagine if any yeah, one of us was true. in that situation but that is what we want we become family mm -hmm. she can call me anytime middle of the night yeah, whatever I, i'm, I'm as, uh, available my nurses always day. available they call yeah, you every day, day. The you know, that's, they, that's, yeah, that's wonderful. Dr. Louise, they call you and then they check up on you. Okay. Sometimes when you are weak home, mm -hmm. they will just monitor you, ask you to share your Uber ride. When you are home, they call, have you arrived? How are you feeling? And all that. Okay. Even if you call at 2 a.m., they would, they, would they would respond. So, Sage. Mm. Okay. All right. Yeah. Now, um, what is it exactly that you need right now? I need support for a transplant. You need support for a transplant. The transplant is for the for the long term, but in the in the in the short short term, three thousand or or more a week is no joke. It's no joke. It's no joke. Yeah, it's no joke. So um, and you know, thinking of how to make money for the for the next session is also mm -hmm. stressful. Because I'm done with Monday. I did mine yesterday, Monday. Tomorrow I have to go. And then the next and will be on Friday. Friday. And now you're thinking, thinking of how, how am I going tomorrow? You know, wow. how am I going tomorrow? And you know, with this case, you can't pick Totoro because you can't walk well. Yeah. And so you would have to pick. Uber. And Uber or Bolt or Yango yeah. in the morning and then you would have to pick it back home. Yesterday, for instance, Mondays, at, I don't know how the people do it, but yesterday in the morning, I was at 5.20 and my session starts at 6.30 in the morning. I was at 5, 5.20, there was a price of 128 CDs. That's the inn alone. And you have Where do to you live? Spintex. So, Spintex to East Legon. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And that is the closest and then safest for me. Oh. Yeah, because I have, I have tried other places, they didn't work. So, I'm stuck with stage, Sage, because that is where. And so, I'm with East, East Legon. So, how much exactly are you looking for? I'm looking for um, a bill came. We have looked at other Okay, options. so that's, 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 that's the information on your screen. This right one there. has to be reviewed. It has to be reviewed? Yes. It's now 60000 Prices, <laughs> Prices have gone higher too. So it's, it's no more $45,000. It's, it's $60,000. It's 60000 now. It's more. It's more. Wow. Than because when you go for the transplant, mm -hmm. you must, um, we must be three people that donor, a caregiver, yeah. where you would stay. And normally, you would um, stay between three to five, five months. Your daily food, so medication, yeah, cater for all that. TNT going up yeah. and down, data and all that. It's more hotel bills. Wow, Doc. Now, look at the flyer. It was $45,000, mm -hmm. but now it has increased. That is correct. Can you break it down for us, you know, well, what exactly? 
Um, <laughs> you know, the it depends on the hospital, yeah, first right. of all. Are you planning to, you're not planning India. to do it in this country. It's in India. Yeah, India. So, yes. India so, okay. so first, so cheaper. Oh. She was looking at the U.S. Yes. And if we pass the U.S. It will be more. Yes. But India is cheaper. It, that's yeah, where most now. Kenyans are going. I've seen somebody go to Turkey. I have about two patients that have gone to India and mm -hmm. they've transplanted. Mm -hmm. Um, so first she has to buy a ticket. Mm -hmm. She can't go by herself. She yeah. has to bring someone because yeah. she's practically going to undergo surgery. Yeah. Then she has to find hotel. The then the mm -hmm. donor that you're bringing, you also mm -hmm. have to take care of. Are you bringing one or two donors? Mm -hmm. I even suggest people don't take just one, just in case. Just in case, yeah. yeah so yeah. you need a backup. Mm -hmm. And first you have to convince two people. To come with you yeah. to go to and India. Yeah. 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 How can I yeah. give you one? Exactly. And undergo surgery. And you know what the um, our cultural norms, our mm -hmm. understanding of transplant, why would I? It, it's, mm -hmm. That one is a whole other discussion <laughs> that we have to have. I mean, next time we come, we have to have that. <laughs> then you also have to cater for them. Yeah. Then they also are undergoing surgery. Remember that it's, they're going to take their kidney and transplant it to you. So both of you are going to undergo surgery. Yeah. And so they have to be taken care of in terms mm -hmm. of their surgical mm -hmm. needs and then your surgical needs. Mm -hmm. The donor's surgical needs is a little bit less than the recipient's right. surgical needs. Right. But it's all surgery and some of them pain tolerance, pain control. Yeah. You have to make sure they have their medicines, mm -hmm. post-op, everything. And then after that, where you stay, your follow-up, they also have to follow up to make sure their wounds are healing well. Yeah. So it takes a lot of money. I even probably think that 60000 is not what is low be enough. Yes, mm -hmm. it's probably low-balling. But it's a start. It's a start. It's a good start. They can start from there and see, you know, how you go. And I'm sure that some of these hospitals, you can also make payments. Especially when they know you're coming from somewhere, yeah. so you make an initial, initial payment. Initial payment, yeah. They can yeah. break it down into maybe yeah. two or three payments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we don't do that really in Ghana. So, I mean, we do a little bit in Kolibu, but mm -hmm. it's not a full transplant center where people go and do surgery. Okay. So most Ghanaians who need to do it have to travel outside the outside. country. Outside. And so far, India is the cheapest. The problem sometimes I have, like I said, is maybe if it's a living related, that's fine. But people who are going there to get mm. uh, kidneys from there, I don't think the quality of the yeah. organs oh, are that great. Okay. Yes, okay. because they're taking them from prisoners, poor people poor who people need money, hungry people. Oh, wow. hungry people. So you would advise that you take from someone that is you trust, right. someone relative. you, that a is relative. Yes. 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 Okay. okay. The living related yeah. relative, like yeah. the person is living yeah. and they're related to you. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. a relative, it's a friend, it's someone that you know. Because that person technically is healthy, mm -hmm. is alive. Mm -hmm. If it's related, more likely they, um, um, they are more compatible. Mm -hmm. Meaning mm -hmm. that, yeah. see, when you bring somebody organ into a, another person's body, the, the first thing that my body would want to do is to reject fight. it. Mm -hmm. They will uh, fight it. Yeah. So even after that, we still have to put them on medicines right. so the body doesn't fight it. And yeah. the body can fight it and kill it and kill the new organ mm -hmm. because they are seeing wow. it as foreign. A new thing. Wow. They are seeing it as a new thing. Yeah. Wow. So the more closer you are related to the person, the, better. the closer uh, the, we are, our awesome. blood type, our... Okay. All that is closer the the more my body will accept it mm -hmm. okay so that's the best kind of organs and I've seen people do it for 15 years 20 years and they don't need dialysis anymore yeah okay all right patients have you got a donor already um, not yet not yet well I have to you have to yes I have to but they are they are not related because when we checked the relations it wasn't compatible. Oh. Yeah. And then it means you don't have a donor. No, but I have two. The two with the with the with the um, Indian mm -hmm. session. Mm -hmm. What they are saying is you can bring them, and then they will find somebody there for you. You know, so that um, it will be like a blood donation. They can give you somebody there that's matches you and then give yours to somebody there but wow but like doctor is saying it's not safe because the one they might give you over there may not be compatible compatible yeah so. and so you 
And so you might, you might come and then it's not working. So wow. a Ghanaian will be better. Will be better. And I think Doc is, will be helping me out with that. So, yes. We, okay. I've sent yeah, one since, of my patients yeah. to the U.S. I think six months ago. Yeah. And so, he's gotten his transplant and he's doing okay. Mm -hmm. But of course, it's much, much more expensive. Than yeah. that. And he also did a living related. So mm -hmm. they took somebody they knew. They knew. And they yeah. had, we had already done some tests to see the compatibility. And he brought about three people and we, we, we ran tests to see how compatible they are. And the one most compatible is the one that they took to the U.S. Okay. So, and now okay. they have gotten their transplant. Okay. The person who donated their kidney is doing well, mm -hmm. and my client is doing well, or my patient okay. is doing well. Okay. But the U.S. is expensive. Yeah. Yeah. So going to India is the next best option for most Africans. Right. And I still recommend that you bring someone instead of getting the Organ a foreigner. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. what they can do is they will tell you, bring someone, and then we'll take that someone and give it to someone and give you, you one somebody. from India. Uh -huh. But the one they'll give that you from so India, right. no <laughs> they give you from India it, it might so not be. Family yeah. is still, yes. My family is still, you know, cousins I'm, are, are, are coming in. They just want to support. So. Oh, then that's great. Yeah, it that's is. That's great. Then. The money involved. The money. It's the money. Whew, anyway, so I mean, anybody, anybody at all out there, if you know, listening to patients, she's not working. She's as of now uh, uh, getting the support of family and friends, even on a weekly, you know, uh, uh, support that she's get, getting for just being on dialysis and injections. Yeah, blood. You know, a whole lot of other expenses have not mm -hmm. even come. She's spending. She's already spending three thousand, almost three thousand cities every single week every week and she has to do this three times in a week so the three thousand cities that she's spending is not per session but then at the end of the week that's how much she's that spending yeah. on dialysis that yes. is correct so three thousand cities per week is no joke if you're out there and this story has really touched you i mean uh, let's support our own let's sustain our own patience is ours she's our own if you're out there if you can little amounts that you can to support her the number will be put on there so you can call her number patient's number will be put on there this is for the you sage, to call and support the sage to you. Sage. and then to the sage okay account. yes and then um sage. so yeah that's the number you are seeing on there we are going to give patients the opportunity to also mention the number that she would want um on there so in case you want to support, you can do so. Then we have a number from Sage Medical Center as well that you can um, yeah, call, call my in eyes. case. Yeah, my you can eyes. call. So, my sorry? Eyes. Your so eyes. Your eyes. Okay, oh, okay, okay. So, you said it. So, so uh, let, me, let me just... Um, <laughs> let me mention this number on here. 0550-744-986. 0550 And this is Sage Medical Center. This it is the is hospital open. that is helping patients. Uh, patients go through their dialysis. And so if you so want I to um, you contact the hospital, well. this is the number to call 0550-744-986. And then uh, patients, you can also put out my, your personal number, number right. for those that would be interested in contacting you personally. Okay. So please put it out there. All right. So And so mine is 05433. Eight one three nine six hmm. zero five four three three eight one three nine six. Okay, yeah. all right. So let's do our very best to support patients Thank on this you. journey uh, of you know living with chronic kidney disease. But before we go, please, uh, patients, what do you miss about having living a normal life? Wow. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I miss a lot of things. Uh, I miss going up and down. I wish I could just walk and then do my daily activities. Yeah. Yeah. And I miss my fufu as well. Your fufu? I miss my fufu too. Oh. <laughs> you know, yeah. Let's do our best to support patients so she can get back to her normal self and start eating fufu. I know. <laughs> What's your favorite soup? Good. Hey. Abengkwai. Abengkwai. Yeah. Hey, patients. Any good pa. <laughs> Hey, if only I've been crying, I've been crying. With, with, with goats, yes, yes, right. Hey, patient, we're not so. So let's.
let's support, let's support patients in the little way that you can. Please do your best to support her so she can go get the surgery done and go back to living her normal life. It's time for us to wrap up on this segment of Good Living segment. We've been talking about uh, chronic kidney disease. Before we go, Doc, as young people, what should young people do to prevent getting chronic kidney disease? Thank you. Um, young people, briefly. Yes, briefly. young people should actually stop taking all of that. Um, first, you have to get a medical checkup every year at least. Mm -hmm. And then people are drinking too much alcohol mm -hmm. and they're taking a lot of substances on the market. The substances they are taking has to do with, you know, um, these aphrodisiacs. Um, your friend is saying it, it, all kinds of names. They're taking too much of it. And I think oh. that's the reason why, especially young men are coming up with with um, chronic kidney disease. So just be careful what you take. You don't know the dosage. Everything in moderation. If you're taking alcohol, take it in moderation. In moderation. Um, and also get a yearly checkup. No, so with what you just said, my mind went straight away to only men, but on the average, <laughs> men and women getting kidney disease. Men are getting much, much more uh -huh. than women and directly related to these aphrodisiacs mm -hmm. on the market. Yeah. We are still waiting for the full research in terms of the medical um, fraternity mm -hmm. to come out to know exactly which ones of them, but it's a general it's thing. A general They're taking thing. it yeah. too much. I mean, you're not supposed to last for the eight hours, mm. you understand? <laughs> but they think that they have to. And so because of that, there's a lot of peer pressure and people are taking And when we listen to our airwaves, we see a lot of people advertising it. So people are taking it and it's leading to a lot of problems that we're having in the country. So, today. Be so best, best thing to do is stay away from them. Exactly. It's not like alcohol that Doc would say, you know, take it in moderation. That is correct. Right. So just stay away from these aphrodisiacs and all that. But then you can take alcohol, but do so in moderation. Thank Prof, right. thank you so much. Patience, thank you so thank much. Thank you too. Uh, this has been Good Living segment right here on Prime Morning on this awesome Tuesday morning. Uh, I have been speaking with Professor Grace Ayen Sudankwa, who is a surgeon and public health expert. And then Patience Okpati Amba, who is you know, a person living with chronic kidney disease. Like I said earlier, do your best to support her if you can, so she can go back to living a very normal life. My name is Esiedua Akumia. There's another conversation coming up. Go nowhere. <laughs>